Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's topic of discussion is on ICMP, ICMP version 4. ICMP stands for Internet Control Message Protocol. Now, in this video lecture, we shall be seeing what is the functionality of this protocol, why it is required. So, if you remember the TCP IP protocol suit, wherein I had shown five different layers, the very first one on the top will be the application layer, followed by the transport layer, okay, and uh, network layer, data link layer, and physical layer. In the network layer, you would have seen that the main protocol mentioned there is IP, internet protocol. Along with that, there are other protocols mentioned like ICMP, IGMP, ARP. So these are the protocols that are mentioned in the same layer, that is the network layer. That means what is the conclusion? ICMP is a network layer protocol. But what for it is used? So this protocol is a companion to IP protocol, internet protocol, mainly used for reporting errors to the host. Now what does it mean reporting errors to the source host? So this is your source in between you have different networks fine and you have the destination. Now reporting errors towards the source. This is the source. This is the destination. Fine. What is the functionality of the internet protocol? Version 4 that is IPv4. What does it do? It starts sending the message from the source and it makes sure that the packet reaches the destination. That means its job is to uh, select a route in the network, forward the packet so that it will reach the destination. But uh, IP is not a reliable protocol. If there are any errors during transmission, those errors are not getting reported to the source host. For that reason only, this protocol is used, Internet Control Message Protocol, which is going to report errors to the source host. So why we require what type of errors may occur during transmission? See, for example, the packet has started transmitting from the source and it is trying to reach towards the destination. A router may drop a packet, fine. There may be a chance of that chances that a router is dropping a packet because the router doesn't know the route to forward the packet. That's why it is discarding the packet. And there may be a chance to see, moreover, once the packet is getting fragmented, uh, the destination is expecting all the fragments of the datagram. In case if the destination host has re re uh, received one fragment and is not able to receive the other fragments of the same datagram, within the time limit, then what, what to do? So that type of error should also reach the host. So this way, these things which are, and moreover sometimes what will happen, the TTL value is zero, fine? The TTL value is zero, okay? And the router that is receiving or the node that is receiving with the TTL value equal to zero is not the intended recipient. So that time also this kind of error should get reported back to the source. So for these kind of things and also IP protocol does not have any uh, query mechanism feature like if a host wants to get to know information about some other host in the network or if a host wants to know information about some other router in the network then there is no mechanism in the IP protocol. So in that case also ICMP is used. So to carry out these deficiencies to overcome these deficiencies this ICMP protocol is used. So we are saying in very simpler words, ICMP is going to report errors to the source. So those errors, what type of errors? First, we have to look into the two different categories of errors. The first category is under the heading error reporting messages. The second category is the query messages. So under error uh, reporting messages, you have how many? Five different types of errors. One is called as destination unreachable, source quench, redirection, redirection fourth is the time exceeded fifth is the parameter problem then we have under query two types of messages echo request and echo reply timestamp request and timestamp so in this video lecture we shall be seeing what does this what are these kind of error reporting and query messages so let us see one by one destination unreachable is the error okay that is that is getting reported to the source when when server is down see normally what no we will also be uh, looking for some web, web page for to look for some information we are using the http protocol so if the server is down then the source has to get this information so that type of message is called as the destination unreachable 
then the second type of message is the source quench and moreover destination reachable there is one more possibility also for destination reachable unreachable sorry the packet has reached the destination successfully okay but the packet uh, so the destination is not able to send the packet to the higher layer there the reason is the port numbers that are mentioned in the packet are not found so in that case also this kind of error destination unreachable is reported to the source host so this is the first type of error reported then comes the source quench so this source quench is see this is the source normally the packet start moving from the source towards the destination now intermediate routers they may not be able to process the packet at the rate at which they are receiving the packets from the source so the source is sending the packets at a higher rate but the processing at the router is happening at a lower rate then definitely this uh, router is not able to process the packets because its buffer is full the capacity is actually some uh, uh, to hold some uh, the buffer capacity may be 10 packet it is it can hold 10 packets but it is receiving uh, at a very faster rate that's why it is discarding the packets for that reason that type of error should also get that means in the source quench the reporting is require this one informing the source host to slow down the sending of packets the third one is the redirection redirection is mainly see every time uh, we have seen that every router maintains what a routing table fine it knows that uh, what will be the next interface on which it has to place the packet if it is receiving from so and so host and the source host also knows that what is the default router see normally what no every network knows that if suppose if this is in one network this particular host which is present in the network it knows that to send a packet from this host what is the default router suppose the source host has sent a packet to uh, router r2 let us assume okay router r2 then the router r2 what it is it is it is taking the packet from this particular network but what a router r2 is doing is it is redirecting the packet r2 uh, from its from itself to another router okay r1 fine and it is also sending a message to the source host it is sending in the message that you can make the default router from the next transmission the default router you make it as one because there is a uh, there is there is a direct route from the source to r1 also that's why this kind of redirection we say the message error message type is what redirection like r2 is receiving the packet from source host but r2 is uh, redirecting the packet that means it is directing the packet to some correct router which the source should have done then it will inform to the source about this particular thing so that the source from the next packet it when it can make r1 as the default router this is better because normally what was happening if it is sending to r2 r2 is once again forwarding to r1 so it is increasing by one hop instead if the host makes r1 itself as the default router then this is more better than this so that's why this kind of message is called as the redirection message we have the time exceeded message also time exceeded message normally if all the fragments because if ip datagram is fragmented into what packets of smaller size the destination host is expecting all the fragments and there is always what a certain time within that time limit all the fragments of that ip datagram should reach if it is not receiving all the fragments within that time limit then we say it is time exceeded and also if a router or if an intermediate host or any node is receiving a packet with ttl value equal to 0 because that node is not the intended recipient then that error has to go to the what to the source host so this is uh, this type of errors uh, that means there are two types of errors under the time exceeded fine one is ttl equal to 0 and uh, the other one is all fragments not reaching the destination within the time limit then we have the parameter problem as one of the error reporting message so what does parameter problem means you have the if you remember in one of my previous video lecture i have shown you the ipv4 header format there are different fields here so each of the fields whatever they have there the certain values will be written there then the node receiving node whether it is a host or a router the it, it will perform the checksum okay cal calculation to see that all the values that are sent from the sender side are exactly the same when it is receiving 
that it can do by performing the checksum. If the checksum value is not correct, that means one of the values here would have got corrupted or more than one value would have got corrupted. That's why we say parameter problem. And that and uh, because of that uh, error, the router cannot forward the packet, isn't it? Because definitely the complete, uh, the this one, the information that is sent in the packet is not correct at all. Just imagine if one of the parameter means you take, for example, the destination address only. If that gets corrupted, that means it is intended to, act, it is going to some other wrong host. So all these things, if the parameters are not correctly found by the router or the destination host, then that error should reach the source, conveying the same thing. So these are the five different types of error reporting messages. The second category of error reporting messages, uh, sorry, the second category in ICMP is query messages. The first one is the echo request and echo reply. Echo request and echo reply. So these are the query messages. IP protocol was not having this kind of feature. So I, ICMP is used here for this kind. Echo request, simply a host wants to know information about some other host or network. Fine. If it wants to know whether its neighboring host is active, is alive, then it can send a query message. If it is getting the reply, then it is an echo reply. If the host or if, if the destination host or node that is any router is active and alive, then only the reply, the source will be getting, isn't it? So it is like a request. In simpler terms, I can say here, the request packet Echo request has gone from one node to the other node. Fine. The other node is sending what the reply packet. If the reply doesn't come from this host, that means what? This host is not active. Same thing, you no? Know, before, actually why they try to do this echo request and echo reply that is exchange of these two messages is normally to start the communication. Before sending any data, just the, the source host will try to confirm that yes, whether this node is active or not. Similar is in our everyday life, what we are doing regularly now in WhatsApp. When we try to communicate with someone, first we try to send a message, isn't it? Hello, if the reply comes, then we can start sending the messages. Otherwise, we assume that yes, that person is not active. WhatsApp, let us postpone our conversation. So that way this type of messages are used here to check what whether the host is alive active. Then we have the timestamp request and timestamp reply. So these second type timestamp request and timestamp reply is used to calculate the round trip time. So I'll tell you what is round trip time now. Timestamp reply. This is the second type of query message. If this is your source host, this is the destination host, this timestamp request and timestamp reply can give you the value for RTT. RTT is round trip time. What is round trip time? The time taken for a packet okay, to travel from source to destination and then back from that is back to source from destination. So that is two way. Here this particular okay from here to here then from here to here so we say this as round trip time so let us take for example this host a is sending the packet at time t1 fine the source b uh, destination is receiving this packet at time 2 that means when it is sending the packet here timestamp request source node a is including what the time at which it is sending the packet fine that is that means it is including time t1 then this node will receive, assume that it is receiving a T2. Then T2, after receiving, it will reply to the source. And in the reply, what all things, what are the different uh, times it will include? First, it will include that it has received the reply at T2. And now this source, this node B is trying to send the reply now. So it is sending the reply, let us assume at time T3. So it will include even that time T3 also. That means now this node is including in the reply packet, okay, in the reply packet T2 and T3. So when it comes here, this packet, now this A, assume that it is receiving at T4. So totally you see T1, T2, T3, T4. It is uh, this node, since it includes T2 and T3 also in the packet, A after receiving at T4 will come to know 
yes the packet has started from b at t3 b has received its original that is request packet at t2 and a that means i am receiving at t4 so with all these t1 t2 t3 and t4 it can calculate the round trip time from time taken to travel the packet from here to here and back from b to a if even with this we can calculate one way time with what with only just t1 and t2 this is one way time but if you are taking this time getting included that is the reply time the reply that is coming from here with that time you can calculate the round trip time so time stamp request and time stamp reply are used to determine what the round trip time so these are the different types of error messages in icmp v4 and moreover in continuation with this i have to tell you regarding the if icmp is sending information uh, sorry i mean to say error reports uh, reporting errors to the source host then what type of packet format it has got see every protocol if they are sending any message there is a format like ip if you take ip packet consists of two parts ip header and the payload similarly when you are talking about icmp packet icmp will also have what the header part and the payload so here we need to find out what is there in the payload here because payload is normally in our uh, normal uh, this one um, assumption is what data data from the higher layer now icmp is not carrying any data it is trying to send errors so so i shall be discussing regarding that part in my next video lecture hope in this video lecture whatever i have explained regarding icmp the different types of errors okay that the icmp is reporting to the source host uh, and moreover you have to know here very clearly that icmp is not sending the packet directly to the below layer below layer is what data link layer but it is not sending directly it is making use of what the ip header only that means it will encapsulate its message in the ip and then send to the data link layer so all those things let me explain you in the next video lecture hope you have understood followed this topic thank you take care bye bye